Welcome back to another tutorial, students. We're going to continue right where the last one left off. The last one, we created our ship being able to interact with these asteroids. Of course, they'd spawn in a bad spot to interact. But as soon as they touch us, our program stops and ends because it takes all the damage, only one damage per interaction, but this interaction is happening way too many times really quickly, destroying our ship, reducing its health to zero almost instantaneously, and stopping the program. We need to create some more sophisticated logic here to be able to keep track of this. And the way that we're going to do this is that we are going to say that the asteroids can only do damage to us once every, I don't know, some amount of time. Basically, we're going to set a, what we call a trigger. As soon as I take one point of damage, then I'm not going to allow my ship to take damage for a certain amount of time. Basically, enough time for us to get away so we don't keep on taking too many ticks too quickly. So I'm going to add some information up here in my attributes. I'm just going to add a bit of space here to put them in. This is starting to get quite cluttered. We should really go back and reorganize things in logical clumps, add in some comments. I'm not going to do that right now, but it would be a really good idea before things get a little bit too overwhelming up here. I'm going to add in, first of all, a boolean, a true or false, called damage taken. And I'm going to set it initially, oh sorry, to false. I don't take damage immediately. I'm going to set this to true once I take damage. But for now, it's set to false. I'm going to create a number called damage taken timer. I'm going to initialize it to zero. And that's actually all I need to create for now. Damage taken false and my damage taken timer set to zero. What I'm going to be doing is I'll be wrapping some of my check contact information with a couple of these things, the damage taken boolean and the damage taken timer to be able to give our spaceship some breathing room after it's been hit. So how am I gonna do this here? Well, if I'm touching an asteroid, I'm gonna have my damage taken boolean set to true, okay? It's now taken some damage. And I'm going to initialize a number from my damage taken timer. Let's give it 50 ticks of the program. This can always be changed later. And now, down below here, I'm going to add in some new logic. Here's what it's going to look like. If damage taken equals true. Remember when we're comparing, we put the double equal sign for our comparison. One equal sign means assignment. I would be making damage taken equal to true. With a double equal sign, I'm comparing them. If damage taken is true, this is the condition I'm working under, perform some logic. So as soon as you think about this method being run, it's going to run every tick. But if on a certain tick, this is true. If I'm touching an asteroid, it's going to get the information. It's going to reduce my health by one. Then it's going to set damage taken to true and damage taken timer to 50. The program then moves on to the next piece of logic. And if damage taken is true, it's going to do everything in here before it loops back around to doing more damage again. So this is what's going to prevent this from happening too many times in a row. Here's what we're going to do. The damage taken timer is at 50. I am going to reduce, decrement that damage taken timer by 1. This minus minus is a shorthand way of saying subtract by 1 each time this is run. It's the same as saying damage taken timer equals damage taken timer minus one. But that's annoying to write out like that. So instead, we just say minus minus. So each time this runs, it's going to reduce it by one. What this does is that it's going to set up the next piece of logic where as long as this isn't zero again, like it did in the first place, then damage taken is going to remain true. And here's how I'm going to set this up. If damage taken timer is less than or equal to zero. So once this timer has run enough times that it's back to zero or maybe below zero, I'm gonna turn off the damage taken. I'm gonna say, okay, enough time has passed. I'm allowed to take damage again. So damage taken is now false. So far, this is all a whole bunch of fancy code that isn't gonna do anything yet. We'll see here really quick if I get hit. Oh, the program ends, there's no gap in time. That's because I need to add in one more piece of information up here. This is the money addition that's really going to make the big difference. 
It's dark in my room here. I can't see my Anki. There we go. If touching asteroid and damage taken equals false. This is the key here. And means I'm joining two pieces of logic. If this is happening and if this is happening. This code will only run if both of these things are true. If I'm touching an asteroid and, according to the way we set this up, we haven't taken damage recently, then allow it to take more damage. But if we have taken damage recently, like we assign here, if we take damage, we send it to true, it's not allowed to take more damage for a little bit. For how long? Well, we set it to 50 ticks, and this is going to run 50 times each time it cycles through, until it's allowed to turn it to false again. So after 50 times, this will be back at zero or below, and then this will be allowed to set it back to false, which then allows this to all run again, if that's the case. What that means is that if my ship gets hit, it takes one damage, and I got away there. I didn't instantly die. Let's pause it and see how much health I have now. Four. It did one damage, but then it gave me 50 ticks to be able to get away before taking more. Let's just double check this is working. That should be three. Now, how much time passed? It's hard to know how much time passed. Okay, we did dodge that next asteroid because there's no visual way of telling. I for sure got hit there. But remember the visual is a bit bigger than the ship. So if I get like close, was that a hit or not? I'm not entirely sure in my game. I can look here. It looks like it was a hit, but there's no visual feedback. Now with my last tick of health, if I accidentally run into it, Bam, my game ends. That's a lot of space there. That could really be fixed in a later iteration of this program. I would like to also include some visual information that shows that window I have of getting away. Now, there's many ways you can do this. We're going to go with a pretty simple way, which is changing the transparency of the actual ship image. I'm going to show you a more modular way to do this. I'm going to create a new method called set transparency, taking in an int called transparency. If I think back, did we do something like this for asteroid? Actually, I'm just trying to think back now. Yeah, we did. Change transparency. I'm moving it a bit different here. Set transparency. Why don't we call it the same thing, just so that we have consistent stuff going on in here. So the change transparency, I'm going to be doing a similar thing with this. I'm going to be taking my image and I'm going to be setting that transparency to the value I set in for transparency so that I can see there's a difference visually in certain scenarios. So let's think about this. I want my hero to look like a fully opaque, solid hero before it's taking damage. And during that window where it's taking damage, I want it to be more transparent to show that it's kind of recovering for a little bit. So that means that once I've taken damage up in here, I want to set my transparency to some value. Now it's going to have a problem with this because I need to actually send a value. If you remember, the maximum value is 255, but here when we've taken damage, I want this to be a smaller number. I find it hard sometimes to remember all these individual numbers. It's kind of a magic number in a way. I'm going to deal with this in a bit more of an intelligent way. I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to create a word that describes the maximum transparency. I'm going to call this private final int. This final means I'm not allowed to change this value anyway. It's like a permanent value for this. And I'm going to call this, because it's final, with capital letters. And then the space, normally if I was doing camel case, I might write it like max trans. But because it's all uppercase, we can't do that camel case. So we put an underscore between the different ideas. This is the max transparency. And that equals 255. Maybe I wanted to adjust this for some reason. I could change it right here. This is the only spot I'm allowed to change this. I can't do any getters or setters for this. Well, I can get a getter, but not a setter, because it's final. And what this allows me to do is anytime I want to access this max value, I just put max trans. So down here, instead of saying 255, I'm going to say max trans. And why I did it like this is just because sometimes words are more helpful at remembering different values. But I want when it's hit it to be, let's say, half as, as opaque, or more double transparent. I'm just going to divide this by 2. So the transparency of this image is going to be set to half of 255 in this location. Let's see if this actually works. Max trans, 
temp image, temp image, temp image, set transparency. With my program being glitchy, I could have a little typo in here and not notice it. Let's just reset this because I really want to see. Okay, we do have some typos somewhere here. Let's just pop open our three main guys right here. And Greenfoot is being a real pain on my screen right now. Test this out. I'll have to look at this visually here for a sec. In my hero class, my max trans is 255, my final int. If I scroll down here, I have set all my information, my health. I've just made, recently made some changes that are not working. So let's take a look at this change transparency. Oh, it's because I changed the name and I forgot. Change transparency. That should fix it. Awesome. So now when I get hit, what I should see is my ship now much more transparent. There's a problem though. It's still permanently transparent. I haven't set a way for it to change back once the timer has run out. So simple is enough. I find the part of my code that has the logic for once the timer's done and it's back to being the normal scenario where I can take damage again. Take damage equals false and change transparency back to max um, transparency value. Now what we should be able to see when I get hit, I have a window of transparent and there we go. It's up. I can take damage again. As long as I'm in that window, I can't take more damage. But here I can take damage again. I should have one HP left. I can see very clearly. I know each time I got hit and now it's over. I took damage and my program is done. It's ended. Awesome. Now our program starting to feel a little bit more like a game. I can actually battle these different asteroids. I can kind of get some sense of when I'm winning or how I'm doing. And then I can tell when I got hit and without having to have any massive instructions, I have some good visual feedback about when I'm safe, when I'm in danger. Now there's more to add on to this. And in our next lesson, which will be the final lesson in this series for our spaceship game, we're going to learn a bit more about how to populate information on our screen to give us some more information, particularly a score and the health of our character so that we know when things are getting dire so that we can improve our gameplay and just because it's good form to have that information for our players. We'll see you in the next tutorial for that. In the meantime, you need to get this functionality implemented in your game and I challenge you to consider seeing if you can expand the functionality of the changing of transparency. Can you make it so that the asteroid and or your ship has different levels of transparency beyond what we show here. Or maybe there's some other way that you want to show some feedback about it going into damage range. Maybe you want to provide a sound effect as feedback. Once it's taking damage, it also plays a sound effect so that you know. And then once it's able to take damage again, it plays a different sound effect to let you know, okay, I've recovered, we're ready to keep on playing the game again. One more idea for you to try when I reset this here. I can shoot my weapons, but let's say we want this scenario where if I've gotten hit, it's time for our ship to kind of have a recovery period. While I'm hit, I can still shoot. Can you add into your code a pause in all the shooting capabilities while it's recovering from a hit? That might the, make the game feel a little bit more, I guess, realistic if you want to go there. A few things for you to challenge and try out before moving on to the next tutorial. See you in the next one.